Well, it is 8.30. I'll call a meeting of the Metro County Board of Supervisors to okay. order. I have an agenda before us. I'll ask if there's any additions, corrections, changes, deletions. Sorry about that. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor, by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item two is county attorney general discussion. I've got so much stuff here, I don't know where to start. Beginning. <laughs> I have no idea what this watershed deal is. None. I get drafts and 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 drafts, and I have no idea what it even is. Basically, uh, Mark, it's for funding for uh, trying to come up with uh, uh, ways that we can. Uh, withhold large amounts of water and uh, when we get these super rings is really what uh, the overall intent of this thing is and apparently the Iowa legislature uh, is putting out um, a couple of uh, grants that's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for uh, two of these watershed projects to go forward. And uh, uh, we believe that uh, this uh, Cedar River watershed project would be one of these that uh, should qualify, uh, especially since this uh, Senator Hogg or Hogg or whatever his name is from Cedar Rapids is behind it. And uh, he's really well, who's doing it. these drafts? Uh, Susan uh, Jenkins. Uh, Junkins, Junkins, apparently, uh, and I don't know if she's doing them herself or if she's uh, uh, having somebody else do them. She's the wife of. Uh, is she an attorney? Uh, I know her husband is. He's uh, Bob Johnson. Well, because these make no sense to me. Okay. Is what I'm saying. I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't say who's involved in it. You know. You have an agreement that says, okay, these are the counties involved, this is what each person's doing, and all it is is just vague generalized terms. And, and it, to me, it make, just makes no sense. If I can't look at a document and tell what it's supposed to do, it's poorly written. And to me, it makes no sense. So that's my initial response from looking at about three or four different drafts. Okay. Number two is, you guys got to put, quit putting so many irons in the fire. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you got too much going on. You got too much going on. And what it amounts to is you can do a crappy job on everything or a decent job on something. But you can't have this watershed and the courthouse and Valley and the pipeline and everything else going on. It's just, just too many balls in the air. It's just too much in the air. Because there's going to get mistakes made and there's going to get stuff missed. That's my opinion. As your attorney, you got to, you just got to back away from something and say, we got to back away from this. Because there's just too much going on. It's just, that's my opinion. For what it's worth. Or else you hire somebody else to review some of this stuff. Because I'm getting, like I said, I'm getting five, six, seven emails a day between this and uh, the courthouse and um, contract for private development and, and all that stuff. And each one of them is 20, 30 pages long and you barely get through with one and you get another email two hours later. Here's another draft of that and I'll completely review that. I mean, that's all you get. We, I, I got three drafts of one document the other day, each one probably 20 pages long. And say, here, review these and be ready to comment them by tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. You know, and that's what they are. Because everything has to be going so fast. And there's just not enough hours in the day. So. But this, you know, if you've got somebody who's not a non-attorney that's drafting this stuff, it's a bad idea. Because it's supposed to be, a, a, I, I'm assuming it's supposed to be a 2080 agreement, 
Yes. But it doesn't say who the parties are. It's signed by the chair, the vice chair, and the treasurer, and the secretary. Well, is there a separate 2080 entity being established? If so, who are the players? <coughs> Who's going to administer it? So, I mean, the first thing they've got to have is their 2080 agreement. She jumped right into the bylaws. I think one of the things that have come up with is what exactly are, is the plan for holding back this water and who's going to be the players and, you know. Well, that's part of what they're trying to actually work on right now, I guess, is who, <coughs> like you say, it probably is poorly. And is it, and I'm not saying it's poorly drafted, but... But uh, uh, it's really the uh, three counties here, or four counties, uh, Mitchell, Floyd, and then which one is it south of us? Uh, Bremer. Bremer, I believe, because Chickasaw, yeah, Chick Chick Cedar goes into Chickasaw there at uh, Nashua. Looks like they're talking about the Waverly. And down the Waverly. Yeah. Actually, the city of Waverly. So they're trying to get uh, each one of the... Uh, any and all of the cities can be part of this in all of the counties and those counties plus the soil and water conservation districts is what they're trying to uh, get as many of those players together uh, to <coughs> form this 28E that then is going to try to do a study. What do we need it for? I mean, that, that's my question is why we need this in 2012 when we haven't the previous 100 years. That's, that's just what I'm asking. Other than there's money available there, so we should get some. I'm just asking. I mean, what's the purpose of it? The purpose is trying to uh, uh, slow this water down. Like you say, we're, we're getting more and more heavy rains, and uh, we're having less places to hold that water. So this is really what they're trying to look at, is, uh, is there ways we can uh, is, is come there, up with Is there product? ways we can flood your property so you don't flood mine, is what it amounts to? Well... Not necessarily. <laughs> because I mean, the water's got to go somewhere, and that's the way it is with everybody. When they go to levy or a dam, it floods my property so it doesn't flood yours. Well, but uh, here's what, uh, take take this bridge that we had collapse on uh, uh, Dancer. Dancer here, you know, a number of years ago. And that was on uh, Otter Creek up there by, uh, not too far from the ethanol plant, uh, where the general truck went over. Uh, basically, there's quite a valley in there, and uh, you know, if uh, during a heavy rain, if you could hold some of that water back it, uh, to where it's not going to flood houses, and it's really no crop ground. But what happened when you held water back over at St. Anster? When you had that guy in here last time saying, oh, you're holding all that water back and it's flooding my field and it's damaging my crops, even though it's just... No, but what I'm saying, Mark, is there's yeah. areas that it, uh, it shouldn't damage anything. Uh, they want to try to locate those areas, first of all, and uh, uh, can we do something then with those areas? Okay. Uh, that, that's basically what they're trying to take a look at. And uh, Mark Kuhn, uh, Floyd County is the one that's really pushing it. They're the host. They're going to be the host county. They're going to be doing most of the paperwork. Okay. <clears throat> and is this latest draft the one that's dated 4-16-2012? Is that the latest one? <laughs> Heaven only knows I hope so. <laughs> I got draft, updated draft. draft. The updated, updated draft should be the last one. What's the updated draft? One of the ones that says updated on it. But it's 4, 16, 12. Draft 3. Draft 3. No, yeah, I got a draft 4. Oh, I got a draft 4 now, too. Yeah, there are two different items. One's bylaws and one's the 2080. When are they thinking about entering into this, doing something? Uh, <coughs> shortly. <coughs> well, yeah, 
question I have is, you know, okay, we get this all put together, what's it going to cost, Mitchell County? Right. My next question. Okay. All right. It is not supposed to cost, like I say, that it's all supposed to be funded with state money. Ooh, yeah. As we know, they never promise anything and then come back. So. Well, whatever the grant is done, it's done. Yeah. It's a grant to do something or a grant to do this? I mean, it's applying for a grant to do something. So basically what they need is a 2080 group put together with bylaws and a board so that the board can do the draft for the, the grant. Does that kind of summarize it? Yep. Okay. All right. Now I at least know what I'm looking for. Draft for private development, dated 4-9-2012. Anything that I need to be doing on that? for discussion purposes only. Oh. Which one is that for? It's uh, City of Osage. Valent. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, that's to discuss with whoever signed it to you. <laughs> So talk to Brandon, right? Application for appointment, we went and discussed, and you were going to get a hold of Carl. Again. Hang on. I took it off of uh, the Iowa. Of course, I probably left that one in home. But he took it off on uh, Yellen. Did it. It's the state of Iowa requires you to put your social security number or a nine digit personal identification number on all applications, and so that's why it ended up on ours. Okay. We basically took it off the state of Iowa's six page. Okay. And Eliza would have left it here. Like I said, my only concern is once a person files an application for employment, it becomes a public document. I'll drop it in your box so you got something else to read. <coughs> What's that, this? Yeah, yeah I the one that, because Judy sent forwarded on to me the one that Car, uh, Car, or Yon used to come up with that one. So basically give Yon a call. Yep. I mean, that's probably the easiest. Okay. But I do like the format of the new application. I, I do too, but I'm just I'm a little bit concerned about putting a social security number on there. You know, we could have them do it, but have it in a separate document. That Somebody want to discuss ATVs? Not me. We got some stuff on that. I see a, I see a resolution that was on my desk. And that's from Franklin County. Yeah. Now the email that the guy sent me said something about requiring them to have insurance. I didn't read this word for word because I was just briefly skimming it. I didn't know somebody wanted to do something very specific out there. Is there a provision in there that says you have to have insurance? I didn't see it in here. So yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. It's written in a very... I don't have it written. Let's see if you work. Um, unless the operator has proof of insurance, but... What does that mean? I mean, it's got the proof of insurance there. No, it doesn't say that. Here it talks about proof of insurance. But, but. Yeah, I guess that's all it's... Okay. This is the one that was in effect. And what they did is they passed it for what five month period of time or something like that. And 
then they're going to do another one. I think they said once the road gets a little bit firmer. I don't remember. Did they say that one's going to have changes in it or not? Well, it's just on that email. Just on the email. Forward to me. Okay. Is that something that can be workable? I guess is really. You got two votes. Yeah. <laughs> and by resolution, we don't need to do it by ordinance. Been so long, but it seems like it did say that you could do it by resolution. And that way, you can vote on it every year. Right. You know, if you had a problem the year before, you know, I don't think that was a good idea. Yeah, you can sunset it every year. I'm pretty sure you can do it by resolution. They had no problem, the county attorney down there nor the sheriff both uh, gave a written report that they had no problems with it. To be continued. Okay. I'm just going to let it sit though until somebody brings it up. Sense us doing all the got in the wheel up there. Well, I mean, there's not really a whole lot you have to do if you want to do it. Because, it's, like I said, I think you can adopt it by resolution or ordinance. You just <coughs> do it by resolution. Well, then, of course, there's Rich, you know, anyway. Of course. You I'm just answering questions. I'm not saying whether it's a good idea or a bad well, idea or whether you should do it. I'm just answering questions. I can drive through the rural countryside and they're all over the place. No. I mean, what's the difference? They're all implements of husbandry. I don't know about that. Those 12 and 13 year old kids didn't look like they were doing too much farming. But they may be a little checking their cow. <laughs> I'm just or, telling you what everybody I tells me either. <coughs> I think there's been one ticket written in about five or ten years. And that was because it was a family dispute and one family member turned the other. I don't have anything else. In the city of McIntyre, you know, they complain about the speed speed of uh, vehicles through the town. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's an incorporated city, they can set their own speed limit, can't they? Mm -hmm. Within the city limits? Yeah, we've got a 25 mile hour speed limit now. So, so it must be just a matter of enforcement. I think their concern is enforcement. Okay. <coughs> Tell them to put a stop sign there. I really don't believe in that. I mean, from the standpoint, stop signs, I mean, if speeding is the problem, then let's address the problem. Uh, you know, we, we basically have that at uh, St. Ansgar on 8th Street going to the school from T26. And so they put in a three-way stop there. And they speed up to it, stop within that half a block, you know. And then they're speeding again. It, it really doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And all it does is makes everybody stop that... Uh, well, I think it'd be a little safer at that intersection of Main Street up there, you know, get those trucks slowed down to 90 anyway. Well, I asked, I asked Richie if we couldn't get some bigger signs to put in McIntyre on both sides of the street and, and flag it so at least we're doing, because we do at least take care of the snow and that, I believe. Well, the city could always reimburse us for the signs, too. We've got some inventory that we wanted something bigger. Okay, I'll talk to Donovan about that. It's like I said a couple of weeks ago, we can enact all the ordinances and resolutions we want, but unless we get somebody who will actually go out and write the ticket, you're spinning your wheels. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing else for Mark? Welcome back.
Well, sorry we got so much on our plate. It just happens it's all falling and, you know, sometimes you have to do what you, I mean, you're just missing opportunity if you don't. So. I understand, but my problem is sometimes when you have too many balls in the air, you're better off having less balls. So. <laughs> I didn't mean it to come off that <laughs> I won't quote you on that to the work. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, glad you still have a sense of humor. <laughs> he has red ears. <laughs> I just skip over that watershed thing and table that. Thank you. There's two of each in there. Item four. County engineer update. Morning. Morning, Rich. Another one item that we need to talk about is 10 hour work days for secondary roads. The union guys had a vote last week and they got it passed that they would like to work 10 hour days. Four tens? Four tens. <coughs> Excuse me. Worth County is doing it right now. They're starting April 30th and going until August 31st. Um, sometimes it's easier for, not that we got to compare counties, but if we've got guys doing the same thing, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with starting April 20, or April 30th and going until August 31st. It's, it's an even amount of weeks. It's not in the middle of a pay period. Um, it does, you know, it just means on Fridays there's not a crew here to do any emergency maintenance, we can call somebody in, but if we call somebody in, it's overtime versus regular time. So it's up to you guys whether you guys want to accept it or not. I know that some, in, in some ways it's better. You get more pro productivity in a day than you do otherwise. So um, but we've been doing it in Worth County ever since I've been here and probably even before then, but it's always not been an issue. So it's up to you guys whether you guys want to go ahead and do we have any, do we use part-timers? Can we use those on Fridays? I, I think they would fall underneath the same schedule. The only thing that doesn't change is the the office. We'll still <coughs> we'll just keep our normal hours yet. In the office, so <coughs> always, well, when everybody's healthy and not sick, somebody should always be in the office. But for the most part, I don't think we can treat the part-timers any different. They're 10-hour days, too. Or do they, they probably need some supervision. Yeah. Well, some do. I mean, some depending on the job. Up. If we're going to do maintenance, we're not going to do part maintenance on Fridays and part not. So it's just an all or nothing thing. Yeah. So if you guys are okay with it, you guys can give it the blessing or not. But I would prefer because, like you say, it. Uh, you know, they wanted to go till October first, and I thought, well, school's starting up again. We need to. You know, we're already going to. The month of May, we're already not going to be working Fridays while school's in session. That if anything were to happen, we've got to call people in. Whereas maybe starting, I, it, big deal or not big deal, but I just assume it go to August. Okay in, What's that? It works okay in Worth County. Yeah. You haven't had a problem. Either. And typically, I think this year that we've actually started a month earlier over there, but it works fine. I mean, I know over there we've had issues and. I'll go out and grab the road groomer and Russ will grab the dump truck. He's got a CDL and we'll go fix stuff if we have to. If we're already there and we're kind of slow, we'll go out and fix it if we need to. So not a big deal, I guess. But so then, does that include Weary? No. He's under the engineer's so administration. He's got a CDL? I believe he does. Do we have a couple people here we can send out? I can grab a tractor. And if push came to shove, well, well then you I call somebody a, in. I got a CDL, and then, well, I'm allowed to drive. It's just I'm not, I'm not paid for. I mean, I'm, you know, anything severe. If we got flooding, we'll call people in. But. Right. That's an emergency. Oh, I'm fine with it. Want a motion? Motion or consensus? Consensus. Oh, consensus. I suppose. Consensus of the board to go with a yeah. 10-hour. Starting April 30th. 30th through through August 31st? August 31st will be the last day, and then they'll get their four-day weekend for the holiday and start right back again on the... Now that was, you know, there was still some goings on about whether or not they wanted to start this early or not, but we'll approve it through that time period. If they would like to change it, I don't think it's an issue, as long as we don't go any further than... 
right. bit longer than the McIntyre Bridge project got a little bit delayed last week, but we have it for dumping rock on top now for a surface, so if you're invited to air tomorrow, we should be driving on it again. Good. It looks really good. So, um, I did meet with WHKS last Friday and discuss bridge maintenance things, and we're working on some solutions to some of our issues with bad piling and, and things like that. Some of them we just, some of these bridges we just can't fix without replacing, but some of them we might be able to sneak by, and we've had that conversation before about piling and whatnot. We also got to find the money to do some of these things too. Um, we do have our level C signs in for 350th of it, where, where the mammoth project's going. So I'll get with Gilbane and we'll, they'll bring their, their gates in. When I talked to them last week, they were set a date, like by May 1st, we'll have a level C sign up with gates and then we'll work on some advanced warning on the highway as far as construction site work. And they'll take care of all that signing. And we're just going to take care of our level C signs. Um, other than that, we're out spotting some rock in some locations, blading, just doing our maintenance. <coughs> we're up to Stacyville yesterday. I see the uh, economic development yep. sign up. I'll put a few of them up. I might have to contact the, uh, the DOT on, like, 18 coming in from the south if we want a bigger sign there. That one's right next to a 218 sign and if it's going to be a bigger sign it might need the post relocated or we might need to plant another post and I just we probably need to probably get a work with an highway permit if we're going to plant one so I'll talk to, to, the, to the DOT on that. But as far as our county stuff I told them to go out and get locations and set them up. So. <coughs> no, that looks good. Uh, go south toward Orchard, go off the first curve onto March. Okay. There's a couple of small pieces missing of the, of the asphalt. Okay. Uh, more toward the railroad track, probably. Okay. There's two of them on the uh, east lane. Not real big, maybe a scoop shovel. I think we might have been out there once already, so we'll. That was there last night, so. Okay. Late afternoon. Not this time. I think we had somebody had called last a couple weeks ago. Maybe it just yeah, didn't work. It yeah. looked like we had done something. Well, I, did, I just don't want them to get in. Yep. No, I understand. Yep. Are you going to have to do any hiring? I see you got a couple of retirees. Yep. Here. We're going to probably have to do some. So. Getting applications even when we're not hiring. So we'll have a good. That's good. I what I usually do when we do that is I'll pull anybody that's submitted within the last year. And I'll include them, and I'll probably call them to make sure. But we'll still, I think what we'll do is we'll advertise. We get a good selection of people. Who's all retiring? Uh, Steiger and uh, Francis. Francis. When they retire. Steiger <coughs> and Jane. Jane. I'm not sure about Francis. He's yeah. indicated October. And maybe we just. Uh, Maybe we hire two guys right here on July 1 or something, and then we'll have the guy broke in already for the retirement. Who knows? Mm -hmm. After I sent my memo, who knows who else? I wasn't, I wasn't the popular guy on Friday, so. <coughs> the late on uh, South of Yeah. That one kind of got put on hold. Uh, we went and tried to get information from the electric people and they never gave us anything back yet. So I'll see where we're at on that one. this yesterday with Brian that the guys are going to go out and get their worst they're going to give me a map each territory is going to have 40 miles in it and then we'll kind of determine from there 
they've got certain stretches that are like, I got ten of the worst miles here, and then we'll kind of pick and choose. Like like I said before, we didn't do a lot of plowing the gravel, so there's a lot of gravel left, which might help us in the fact that maybe we can do our own, but we'll see what the maps look like when we bring them back in and see where we're at in respect to the quarries and where we're at for miles. If we're going to hover close by, maybe it's in our best interest to do it. But I know if we get further out, it's a lot more efficient for somebody else to do it because they can pull trailers or pups and be more efficient that way. So once we get our maps made up, we'll look at it. We won't start it earlier just because where the budget is right now, we're not going to be able to do that. Any, any frost spoil problems? No, I you know we've had a few and. I know 480th Street, at least from Kirkwood going going to the west, is pretty tough. So we're looking at that's going to have to be, be worked on pretty good. I know there's probably other ones out there, but I drive that one more frequently than the other ones. Just sometimes when I go to Northwood, that I know that one's in tough shape. But I kind of use that as my guide. If that one's bad, there's other ones. Sure. So, <coughs> I haven't heard anything this year. I haven't heard much either on frost boils. I know that there's been some larger, you know, the last couple weeks, larger manure tankers running around pounding the roads apart. And I've actually been approached by some people saying we should, we should uh, not allow them. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say because <clears throat> they do, they are pretty heavy. But when it's dry, they don't do near as much damage. Uh, I'm still receiving, I talked to electronic engineering last week on the radios too, I talked to Kurt, it sounds like Kurt's staying in analog, but I think what we might do, after talking with electronic engineering and the and, and, uh, Circle K that we use now, we may be able to afford to slowly step our way into digital, not go all, all in on that, but get radios that are compatible both ways work on analog for a while yet, then maybe in a year or two, flip the switch over and go completely <coughs> digital. So that might be, it might cost us $10,000 more, but it's not going to cost us double, you know. So once I get quotes from those guys, I'll know better where we're at, because it just seems like, uh, I'm looking at uh, the price list from the quotes we already have, and, and in discussing with electronic engineering, he's got some questions as to why some of this equipment's needed, so. There might be some savings and other things, so just have to make sure we see everything. But I know that Kurt, Kurt talked to whoever he deals with, and they're just saying analog, which and I know Worth County Sheriff's going digital on their radios. Their costs they cost a lot more. They got to be I think it's called P25 or something like that. Where what I learned was Motorola Digital can't talk to Kenwood Digital. They've got their own proprietary. So when the sheriff's departments and the DOTs and the, 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 the highway patrols, when they get their radios, they don't want to be locked into a certain brand. So they've got to get compliant radios that can talk to each other. Or our radios are probably anywhere from 350 to 500 dollars a radio. Theirs are like 3,000 a radio. So there's a big difference in digital in that respect. We get kind of spend. Put money in Motorola. What if you didn't? Well, what if you didn't do any changes? If I didn't do any changing on what? On the radios. Well, I have to get compliant with the FCC for narrow banding, so I'm going to need some radios, and I need to update the repeater to do that. So I need to spend at least twenty thousand dollars in getting compliant. But after we're compliant, then it's a matter of fading. Just another mandate. One mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Find the money, right? Yep. Anything right. else for Rich? Did we? Mm -hmm. yep, thanks, Rich. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciate it. <clears throat> Item 5 proposal from Central Iowa Detention Agency. Would that be you? That is her. Good timing.
All right, I'm Tony Reed with Central Iowa Detention, and I'm here today. Uh, I've been in touch with Juvenile Court Services, Scott Jensen, and I think he talked to you guys a couple weeks ago about uh, the possibility of joining our detention center. Um, Central Iowa <coughs> Detention is located in Eldora. We've been uh, open for operations since 94. We've got a long-standing history of uh, working with counties, especially rural counties throughout uh, the state of Iowa. Um, our agency has uh, grown over the years. We started with six counties. Now we have 42 counties that are affiliated with us for detention services. Uh, part of the reason we have uh, extensive growth is uh, cost. We have the ability to keep our costs down because we have a lot of diversity in services. Uh, we provide seven core services. One of those is detention. Um, the six others include uh, tracking services. We provide tracking here um, in Mitchell County. We also provide transportation. Uh, which is a huge benefit to uh, sheriff's departments by keeping deputies in the community, serving the community. Um, in addition, we do drug testing, um, coordination services, fiscal services, um, and a host of other services. Page two, you'll see kind of the, uh, the different maps showing the different services that we do provide. Um, and with that, you know, quite a few of those currently are in Mitchell County, which is one of the reasons why we're willing to offer Mitchell County the ability to join our center. Um, on the first page, I guess, shows a few uh, pictures of our center. The uh, building was built in 08, um, so it's still fairly new. State-of-the-art facility, um, digital recording, um, everything's uh, very electronic, so it has uh, great uh, liability outcomes. Page three kind of gets to the, the nuts and bolts, I guess, of our proposal. Uh, our current daily rate for member counties is $50 a day. This is by far the best rate in the state of Iowa. The center that you currently use is 125 a day. Um, <clears throat> we have not even discussed raising rates. In fact, our last five rate changes have all been reductions. So I think that's important to understand. Uh, we don't really have any financial constraints right now. Uh, our FY13 budget is already planned at $50 a day, and our 14 budget is already projected at the same. Um, currently, Mitchell County uh, does have some pretty heavy detention usage. Um, and with that, you see, you know, it's $75 a day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's more than half less what you're currently paying for the same exact service. I think some would argue also that the service may not even be the same or exact. Um, our center has a, a licensed mental health professional on staff, uh, which is a great benefit for kids, especially, I think we all know that most, most of today's delinquents also have mental health issues, also have substance abuse issues. So with that, we have the ability to provide any evaluations needed free of charge to your county um, while the kid is there in detention. In addition, we can do um, drug and alcohol assessments, which is good for uh, juvenile court to know, you know if there are underlying issues with the kid, they should have the ability to address those issues, not just the delinquency issues. Scrolling down through, um, talked about financial stability, and I think that's important for all of us, especially when uh, Counties are affiliated with the center. They stand to bear the burden of that center. Uh, you'll see our excess revenue there in the left column. As we go down through the years, at FY11, we added quite a few uh, major services, which created a delay in bill payment, which is why we show a negative there. So out of uh, eight years listed, we have one, one year with a deficit, which we planned for that deficit, so it really wasn't a surprise. Uh, the center you're currently with, North Iowa and Waterloo, in 07 had a surplus of $500,000. Um, that had a surplus of 9,700, and for the last six um, or the last few years has lost money and prorated into the future. The estimates show major losses. Um, the reduction in usage out of Blackhawk County has been huge, has been a major factor in uh, the reductions at North Iowa detention. Diversification of services, I talked about a little bit earlier. The reason we can charge the rates we charge, it's no secret, it's because we're diversified. We have, we have revenue coming in from so many other streams that we don't need to charge a lot for detention. Um, this year, detention is estimated to be 15% of our service, of our total revenue. Um, detention will be our fourth biggest service <coughs> this year. <clears throat> and scrolling down through the bottom, like I said, we have 23 member counties. Uh, we've added 17 through the years. We also have uh, 19 other counties that are affiliated with our center. And at, at that point, I guess I'd open it up for questions from the board or anyone else. Could I ask a question? Anybody have any? <coughs> well, I'm on just, second just judicial minute, board. Just a minute, just a minute. Anybody here have anything? 
that very last thing. Okay, go ahead, Betty. Well, I was just wondering, what is the? You mentioned seventy-five dollars a day. Is that for non-members or what? Uh, the seventy-five dollars a day difference. That is our member rate versus North Island. Oh, Iowa's okay, I got gotcha. you. No. So we're seventy-five less per day. For and what is the buy-in if uh, a county were to join your? Uh, we, we don't have any buy-in. There's mm. no, no buy-in, no annual fee. Mm. There's really no strings attached. It's well, just a matter of... How much debt do you carry? Uh, right now, I think we're about 800000 Do your member counties have to assume any of that debt? No. Anywhere down the road? No. Okay. Where's your extra operational revenue come from? The extra Who operational... Pays for that? Who pays for the other operational yeah, revenue? You said, you said you get... All this extra revenue coming in, you don't have to charge fifty dollars a day. Well, who pays for that? We have about revenue? we have about thirty five contracts. Uh, the majority of those are with the state of Iowa. Some are through DCAP, uh, Department of Human Services. So we have uh, quite a few contracts that we competitively bid, and with that, it uh, it spreads our revenue out through many different streams. What's the capacity of the facility? Of, uh, saying you want to go or not, right? Um, basically, it's just up to the board to make a decision. We haven't had any problems with where we're at. No. no we a little closer. Or why don't we take it under advisement and give it some consideration return to, to make it over? And Seventeen. Roll call vote. What? Thanks. Roll plan. Aye. Morrell. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number seven is approval of the claims. So so we'll to okay. Certainly. <coughs> you got that done yesterday. So. Guess I was just kind of curious. Do you know why <coughs> we're paying uh, uh, unemployment on a jailer at this point in time? Pardon? You quit to run for supervisor, didn't well, you hear him that day? Well, we shouldn't be paying unemployment. Well, I don't think that was on him with somebody else. A couple other individuals. But I mean, we had our layoffs, what, two years ago on uh, the Austin yeah, thing? Yeah. So, I mean, why? They're, they're not laid off. I mean, their hours got cut, but they're still working. I don't know how that works. Can they draw on part, part of it? Or yeah, they might get their 40 hours. That'd be something to check with the sheriff on. I guess. Yeah, it's out of his department. <coughs> well, the other thing, the other thing there is apparently two of them had schooling. Uh, if they had schooling at the same school, why can't they share a ride? They, I mean, one was $177 for transportation and the other was 180 so. Same location? I'm sure, well, we could take a look at claims, but I'm sure it's probably the same school. Who are the individuals? Uh, the Jen Urban one? Yeah, Jen Urban. And, uh, and Mitchell, Brody, Brody Mitchell. Yeah. Both dispatchers? Jailers. Jailers. We'll set monitors down. Both there the same number of days, or? Same time frame, same class. It looks like yeah, April 3rd to the... One's got 20 more miles than the other. And we'll have to ask her. 
they're both going to the same school, they should be able to at least write share. I would think so. <coughs> on this check for tall grass historians, what's this? That's for what? Yeah. That's for that uh, that report that uh, Leo Rogers has got the new one back yet. She got the draft. Legible this time? I haven't, I haven't got it back yet. I haven't seen one. You got it, Penny? What? The report back from Leah Rogers. Oh, we're going to do that on my, the 22nd is when we're going to have the final report. Oh, I'd say we hold up on that. Well, that was that. part of the contract that we signed with them when they provided the draft. We were supposed to pay 70%. That was the contract we signed with them. Well, I think we did look at the draft, and the draft was not legible. Well, yeah, and she explained that all that, it was a draft, that the final copy will be clear. Per the contract, when they had the draft, we were supposed to pay 70%. And the, this money is all coming back from the state. I mean, we pay it out, but once she presents the final report and all the paperwork's in, the state will pay, uh, reimburse the county. Yeah, you looked at them all, Sam? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the claims. Second. I have a motion to second to approve the claims. Can we have put in the next month's memo in case there's uh, different schools that uh, more than one is attending? We do expect uh, ride shares. Mm -hmm. Can we keep one of the cars? You know, instead of selling them every year, just for that purpose? One of the county cars? Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the claims. So, uh, Aye. Clark? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Item 8, Employee Benefit System Administrative Agreement for Fiscal Year 2013. Yeah, this is a renewal of the one we do each year for the third party administrative. Nothing's changed, basically? No, same. So, uh, so moved. I second. A motion to that. second by Rick Longer. To approve the employee benefit system, uh, system of administrative agreement for fiscal year 2013. Roll call vote, Mark? Aye. Vote Aye. Morale? Aye. Motion carry. Thank you, thanks for your time, Bob. Yeah. Meetings attended? Uh, yesterday I went over and uh, just sat in on the Fort Worth County uh, Board of Supervisors and uh, Basically, uh, uh, they have about four issues over there that uh, they're working on. Uh, they're halfway through their wastewater thing. And uh, the state of Iowa, again, when their wisdom is coming up with new plans or new requirements and that done for uh, actually a water system that uh, they may or may not have to put in right away, but definitely they'll have to make some changes in five five or six years. So Worth County, uh, with that in mind, they're coming towards the end of their TIF, uh, the amount of money that they can use on the end of their TIF. And so uh, uh, they're going to have to do some penciling to see where this all fits in with the gas signal. Uh, uh, the 
since that was their number three priority, and then the fourth priority was coming up with a new conservation building, a uh, whole new, uh, uh, basically an IT center and that out there by their uh, uh, recycling center by Kensett. And so, uh, uh, but they had some concerns again about, uh, of course, that one windmill company wanting to get a reduction in, in uh, property valuations because of the federal grants on those windmills. And, uh, so, like I say, Sid, I, I sat in on that one, and Brenda and I, for a couple of hours, met with uh, Absolute Energy, and Absolute uh, uh, was comfortable with the idea of uh, if they can uh, uh, contribute four and a half million dollars, uh, plus a uh, yearly fee of 323000 uh, transportation charge on uh, uh, their part of the gas, uh, and they would guarantee that they would pay that uh, for the length of whatever loans we have out, outstanding. Um, and uh, they would not be part of any profits that would be, if, if and when profits are ever generated, they would not be part of any profits. They would be standing alone as a uh, uh, entity. They're comfortable, at least, with pursuing to see what the final uh, paperwork would be. And uh, so, um, uh, then I met last night with uh, the Economic Development Commission and uh, uh, pretty much laid out a timetable of uh, what all has to be done here for uh, trying to see where we're at with the gas line. There's uh, just about 10 different balls that have to be juggled at once. Uh, we got to try to do uh, environmental studies, uh, archaeological, um, wetlands, uh, notifying uh, the public that would be possibly affected by this, uh, uh, trying to get uh, uh, bids out to uh, the players. Uh, all of this uh, falling, like you say, uh, in a time frame, uh, and then it's really decision time. Uh, once we get all of our information, uh, have all of the data from uh, Northern Natural, what they're going to charge, uh, uh, when we get all of the facts and figures, and then it's a decision time, does us as a group want to go forward with it? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but until we have the information, we really can't make a good decision. And so that's really where we're at there. We're, uh, the time uh, frame for really decision time was probably going to be somewhere in August. And that's uh, still moving fairly rapidly. Uh, I think uh, by, be able, by being able to do a lot of this work here locally, uh, we can save uh, quite a few thousands of dollars. Uh, and uh, if I can have uh, Barb helping a little bit, uh, Katie helping a little in that, I think we can do most of it uh, ourselves uh, in house. So that's true. That was really my meeting. Last night I had a Midtown Economic Development meeting, and lo and behold, somebody showed up and explained the whole thing to us. And uh, basically, just like what you said, and the board was.
Central Iowa's rate. So after he's been there 30 days, he'll drop down to Central Iowa's rate. Right. Or even sooner, just have to just call it blue and can you meet this rate? And you know, the board gave him the okay to go ahead. Uh, I was <coughs> um, pretty appreciative to those board members because they all understood that the fact that you know something like this could happen to any one of their counties. Right, and the hearing was delayed, what, 60 days? So right. 60 times $125 a day. Right. And then that begins to be serious money. Adult, juvenile, and then there's something else that goes into effect there, too. That then, then it's only $50 a day, I think, something like that. But he says, that after about so much time, he says $50 a day is covered. He said, you rather have the body than not. And then, so that's closer. We are a member, we did buy into that facility. Um, if it just comes down to the $50 a day, well then we can go back a couple of years and maybe the prisoners we've got over there, if that's what it's all about, we can move them out to $50 a day. You know, we're all, we're thinking of saving money. To, oh yeah. You know, we went through that whole ordeal and it was determined we could save $189,000 to $200,000 a year. I mean, it's, so, I mean, we have one individual. It's unfortunate, but um, it was brought up, you know, uh, Floyd County had the one individual, the young person, you know, that was down there. Because Central Iowa did come and talk to him, you know, based on, you know, the, the savings. Um, the board felt that we'd have this in play at that time. Anyway, that was my evening. My DCAP meeting was canceled yesterday morning. Well, okay, item B, Historic Preservation Commission update. I think the mobile site gave each a copy of the, this is what we're doing. May is preservation month. The theme is discovering your hidden gems. So we met and picked out uh, four activities, well, there were five activities. Um, so we're going to go to the Mona Lutheran Church uh, and have a program and music and refreshments on May 4th. Um, we wanted to do Meyer, the Meyer Oratory, but the Archdiocese makes it kind of difficult to use it, the oratory. They put a lot of restrictions on it and they would charge and so I just dropped it. Um, hmm. <laughs> they make it really difficult. Um, then we're going to go to Maroa, and there's the church, and there's the Dockham Log Cabin in the Walnut Grove School, and uh, I sent this article to the paper, and then I took a picture of the log cabin in the school, and hopefully they'll put it in, if not this week, next week. Um, and then on May 22nd, that's when we'll have our final report from Leah, and I did that one map that you said was really hard to read, and um, Lowell found a copy of that and gave me a, a Xerox copy yesterday, which is pretty clear, and then I scanned it and emailed it to her so she'd get a better, you know, she said, she, she said, could you provide me with a better copy for that? So I did. Um, so that'll be her. We'll, we'll invite all the people that participated um, on May 22nd with driving around the county and coming to meetings and, and the community, too, uh, for the final report. And then... And I, you were invited to all of these, but especially on the flag dedication for Julia Addington on the 27th, the Stacyville Cemetery, we raised funds to put up a flag there for Julia Addington. Um, Cheryl Mullenbach will, you know, give a presentation. She's coming back for that. She's coming back for that. And then we will, um, I was talking to Mary Blake last night, because it's, you know, having refreshments out in the cemetery there, well, you never know what kind of day it's going to be. Um, and she's just moved to her, her museum into the old, library, the old city hall, the old newspaper offices, and she hadn't, uh, she said, well, why don't I do my, my grand opening then? And they said, excellent idea. So we will go to the Stacyville Memories Museum at her new location for refreshments and have a grand opening, we'll announce it as a grand opening for her museum. And then the final, oh, and there's a mistake there. You know, I was doing the Union Church, I put Union Cemetery, that should be the Stacyville Cemetery. I caught that and I thought, oh, gee, I was going to go back and fix that. But the final, on Memorial Day, the Union Presbyterian Church is only open Memorial Day weekend. And I, after doing a lot of calling around, I got a hold of Donna Ziegler, um, 
her and her husband have, have taken that over for the last 15 years, although her husband died a few years ago, her and her family, and I don't know who else, um, uh, you know, opened that up, and she said uh, she got all the our copies of baptisms and marriages and everything, um, a microfiche from the Presbyterian Church, because they took all of their documents when it closed, and she said she'd run all off, and she has that available every Memorial Day weekend for people who want to come and look up. And so we'll, we'll have a program about the Union Presbyterian Church and refreshments on Memorial Day. Um, and then in June, we are going to have our annual poetry reading, so more information is coming on the summer solstice. So we sort of made that an annual Hamlin Garland, or there's another um, na nature poetry from Hamlin Garland and Ever, Everhart. Anyway, he's actually from Austin, but he writes a lot about the Sea River. So we'll, we're going to do that again um, at the Hamlin Garland Nature Preserve. So that's what we're up to. Good. And come to any and all of these activities. Looks like they got a busy, busy month. We do. Um, well, it's Preservation Month, and we thought, you know, discovering your hidden gems. And we are trying to get, you know, if you guys could give us some direction on where we can get the map printed. We have got the map project all at what we want on it, and our holdup is we don't have a graphic artist. You know, the map project of the historic sites of Metro County, which we got a grant to do, and we got an extension on the grant, and we've done all the planning part, and then, you know, finding, I don't know if we need a graphic artist, or, but you guys do maps. If you would have a suggestion, who we could call for. What do you mean, like, for graphic artists? Well, you know, to put our stuff on the map, our, like, like, different locations, we've created a... Uh, you know, we sat down after we did the tour, you know, with Leah and everybody else brainstorming, so we tried to create a... You're looking for somebody to, 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 so to know, actually get the yeah, draw get, a picture on the map that well, how, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, somebody that can you know do that part. But you know, I'm not a great take our information and locate it on the map. Oh, I see. And mm -hmm. I think that's probably somebody with graphic art skills, which you know, it's like my my daughter-in-law was laid off and she did the David sign and said if we had paid her the going rate, it would have been eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Why don't you check with NIAC and see if they have uh, anything in their student program, or maybe we, you already have. We have, because um, Janine's got a nephew, Janiel has a nephew there, and um, yeah, they're... Nothing to it. Yeah, we... Yeah. It, the price is like, three. I think our grant allowed $350, so the yeah, kids are just... Yeah. You know, that's nothing yeah. to the kids. What about John Luce? Have you ever talked to him? He's and I an say that because John and Carol, I think, were the ones that designed the uh, the flag for the Mitchell County yep. thing. Yep. Okay. And he's, yeah, well, he might do he's, it. He's quite an artist, that's for yeah. sure. As far as the map, I don't know. We looked at the uh, one that the city, or I guess, what was it? Was it the city or the blue one that's holding out? But that company is... Uh, like a, got a great app from the Better Business Bureau. Those tree maps that are up on the counter up there? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have those, the right? I picked one up yesterday when I was here. But, you know, they have like those, yeah, those nice big ones that don't have so much, you know, some, sometimes they have so much stuff in them it would be hard to see. That's what we were looking at. So, oh, oh good. He's I giving me. So, if you guys can give us, help us out here, because that would be a great. Check, check with the engineer. They have different maps out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been out there before and gotten maps, different sizes, and shape. I can't say exactly what they have, but, but they well, may yeah, have something but I, from years where, where ago you get that would work better for finished? you than, than what, uh, you know, what we have here. That's been our sticking prod. <clears throat> it's like, you know, calling around. So thank you. We'll kind of pursue this because I think that would be a nice, we'd like to get those maps out for the summer for you know people that come to the museum and you know, driving around the county. So uh, up at Stacyville I know they're they're making an arch or something for archway going into the cemetery. I wonder if they do that at the same time. I don't know. Oh for the visitation cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Union, <laughs> not not, not union. <laughs> We're doing good to get that one mowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just west and south of Stacyville. You know where the Michaels Dairy Farm is? You go about half a mile south there. Or right? Stacyville? Yeah. And um, all my penny relatives are right there. <laughs> and the on Addington's, the west side of the road there? It's That's on the west side of the road. Mm -hmm. Walt Adams mowed it forever, but of course he died around Christmas time, and I guess his son's mowing it now. Yeah. On the Angle Road? 
No, it's not on Angle Road. It's built, no, it's it west. had west out of Stacyville. You know where the oh, west out of Stacyville. It's on the yeah. west edge of Stacyville. Yeah, right? where the where the Michaels have their dairy farm. You go down that road, okay. it's about half a mile. Just go to that first road south. Yeah, there are some roads that have been on it. I've been a lot. I haven't been there. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, right. March Avenue. Yeah. It's on March Avenue. So we'll. Um, and the plan is every week. I've been hoping I get this article in this coming week because then each week before the thing, I was going to have like an article about the Mona Church and get a little bit more about that. And about article promoting that <coughs> particular week's stuff that we can get again. We'll see. I took a tour around the county with my mom on Saturday with my iPhone and I took pictures of all these things so that we can have a picture with each article. So I did the cabin in the schoolhouse because then when we do that Rock Creek, I can do the church for the one before that. So that's, and then I'm, I'm trying to get it in all the church bulletins. I made a little half page announcement and um, I, uh, I think the, uh, took it to the um, Isadora, is that what it's called? St. Isidore? St. Isidore. Cluster. Yeah. Yes, that's it, that's it. Um, she's going to run them off and get them in the bulletins and we'll do it in the Methodist church and at the Lutheran church and I'll have still more churches to contact, but I thought that would be another way. And for, since we're featuring a lot of churches, um, try to get the word out. So right. I'll get some little flyers made up eventually. But a lot going on. Sounds good. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. That's all the damage we can do for one week. <coughs> 9.41.